Happy Sabbath, and welcome to our this evening discussion on part two, what we discussed early this morning. And as we prepare our hearts, we want to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to direct our thoughts and mind, to receive the word of God. So with, you, with me, let us bow our heads. I'm going to kneel, and let's seek the Lord, our gracious, eternal, heavenly Father. Once again, we come into thy divine presence in the name of thy Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, inviting the presence of your Holy Spirit to guide us in the reading, the studying, the hearing of your word. Give us understanding, give us clarity, and make it applicable to our lives in these closing days of her earth history. Let your angels be about us, keeping back seen and unseen distractions that will interfere with us hearing you speak to us with clarity. And Lord, impart to us grace to walk in your word that we might truly reflect the very mind of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. As we continue our journey on our discussion as we started this morning, the role of health in the final crisis, part two. The role of health. Once again, I want to bring your attention to this very inspired statement found in Councils of Health, page 506. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who will stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have the opportunity to become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. And those who do this will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. So as we are approaching the impending crisis when laws will be enacted forcing individuals to worship contrary to the dictate of their conscience based on the word of God implementing a Sunday worship law as religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation those who will stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfair position. But while we have a moment of reprieve, it says we should, for our sake, take the opportunity to become intelligent regarding disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. And this will open up a door among even those of not of our faith. In Psalm 67, verse 2, the Bible says that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. God wants the health message to go forth through this earth because the health message cannot be separated from the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are intimate related, health and salvation, because salvation simply means to heal. Health, dealing with the whole person, physical, mental, and spiritual. Let's turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 2. The Bible reads in Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 2. O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, Lord, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Be our salvation in the time of trouble. Isaiah 52, 10. Listen to what God says in Isaiah 52, 10. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. Salvation of God that is a whole restoration process. They will see a people who have been sanctified by the word of God, 
because there's a war going on. You see that in John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to kill, destroy, rob. But Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Abundant life. Eternal life. Help. In Romans chapter 12, we read, verse 1, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need a mind that's transformed that we might know and understand the will of God. Hmm? So I raised this question earlier this morning. When can Christ come? We read in the book of Psalms 102, verse 16. It says, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Zion is the church. Zion is that church. In the book, Education, page 225, the most important work entrusted to a human being is character building. That's a trusted work. Most important, character building. In mind, character, personality, page 670. Transformation of character begins with our thoughts. We saw this in that part one. That as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thoughts produce action. Action, habits. Habits form character. Character determine our destiny. Let's go into the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 3, God said, I'm going to put my seal in their forehead. Right here, forehead. The seal of God, which contains the law of the Sabbath. The Sabbath seal contained the very seal of God. I'm going to put in the point that means those who receive the seal of God will have reflected the very mind of God because Christ's mind is the mind of God which he kept the seven-day Sabbath. He lived a life that reflects the very character of God. And all those who have Christ in them will receive that seal of approval. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says, the Father's name will be written, written in their forehead. Father's name, written. Let's go to Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. Moses said, show me thy glory. You see, name and glory are synonymous. In Exodus 33, 19, God said, I will proclaim my name. So Moses said, show me your glory. God said, I'll proclaim my name. Glory and name means the same. Then you go down to chapter 34, verse 5 through 7. You see God began to proclaim his name merciful, gracious, long-suffering. That's Exodus 34. So God is now proclaiming the very attributes of his character. He's revealing to Moses his character, his glory. That's what he's doing. So we find record here the law in the mind, according to the book of Hebrews 8.10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Law in the mind. Law. God said in Revelation 22, 4, and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead. So when Christ come in the clouds of glory, he coming with burning like the rays of the sun, consuming fire. See, fire cannot consume fire. So we have the very mind of Christ. When he comes, we're going to resonate. We're going to connect. That's very important. Now let's do a little bit of simple uh, anatomy, a little simple physiology. God's going to put his seal in our forehead. We're going through a time of trouble, a crisis. But when we go through that small time of trouble, that's when God is working to seal us, to prepare us, to get a loud cry, and to go through Jacob's time of trouble. When we have to abandon everything, but we need the mind of Christ in order to endure that. So the frontal lobe is the crown of the brain. Hmm? Now, you see a picture here. And it says 
the spinot bone. The spinot bone is a wing-shaped bone right there in the front part of your skull. The spinot bone is a small bone located in the very center of the skull. It was named for its wedge-like butterfly shape. It connects to all other bones of the skull. The spinot bone is one of the seven bones that articulate to form the orbit which the brain sits in. Now keep that in mind, the spinot bone, wing-like. Huh? That's the spinot bone. In the spinot bone, situated in the middle of the cranial fossa, divided into two halves, it is shaped like a Turkish saddle, hence the name and is housed the pituitary gland, the most protected gland in the body. That's that spinot bone. Huh? We find the master gland, the pituitary gland, directs all the glands of the body as the Ten Commandments direct the works of the soul temple. Keep that in mind now. Now notice that the spinot bone, wing shape, like the covering cherubims, there in the holy of holies of the ark there, the covering cherubim, covering the law, protecting the law of God, the ark of the covenant, the spinot bone, right here in the forehead, the spinal cord, that spinal cord, back in your back there. That's the communication network. You'll find that when they would do a surgical operation, even begin to slice those bones the, the, from the spinal cord, the cross section of the spinal cord resemble appearance of angel wings in the center. Notice that angel wing of the center. What is that saying? On every nerve, every fiber is written the very love of God. What is that representing? The spinal bone, the spinal cord. Huh? Like in Genesis 28, 10 through 15, it says angels ascending and descending the ladder, connecting earth with heaven. That's communication. If you have a damage to your spinal cord, it affects your whole nerve, even your mental function. God letting us know he has written his love, his law. Now, here's the most important thing. The front or the forebrain, right here, your forehead. There's a room called Krista Galley. Krista Galley. Krista Christ Galley room. This is Christ's room right here in the frontal lobe of the brain. It is in the forebrain that God desired to sit on his throne in our soul temple. There is a bone in the front part of the skull called Christa Galley, Christ's room. This is Christ's room. The inner apartment of the soul is where God originally inscribed his law of love. Now notice this, the wing spin-off bone represents the angel wing hovering over the sacred ark. Did you get that? Right here in the front brain, you have Christ's room with a spin-off bone like the angel wings in the ark of the covenant where God will inscribe his law. So the frontal lobe, the crown of the brain, right here, we find a healthy frontal lobe leads to a healthy life. Judgment, reasoning, power. Right here, huh? the frontal lobe. Scientific studies show that the frontal lobe is the seat of spirituality, morality, and the will. Please get this. This is the battleground. Satan want to usurp God's position here in the front brain. This is Krista Gallup. This is Christ's room. He's not going to share it with the devil. We must cooperate with him that he would download to us his thoughts, his grace, that we could complete this race. Very important. Krista Gallup. The frontal lobe and the will. 
one of the frontal lobe's most vital functions is the will. Now, what is the will? It's the ability to choose. God created us with a free will. God does not force anybody's will. That's why we should not try to force anybody's will or manipulate their will. Just throw out reason with them. Then they must make the decision. So when we talk about surrendering ourselves to God, that means we surrender our will to God. That means we surrender our decision, our choices, and taking God's choices. That's what it means to surrender. When God said, I want you to go this way, and we say we're going this way, that's a cross. That's all right, that's a cross. But where's the victory? It's the will. When we say, yes, Lord, I want to go your way instead of my way. That is bearing your and my cross. We have crosses every day, but it's the power of the will. Get that? Very important. Power of the will. This is the battleground right here. Who's going to sit on the throne in your soul temple? In Romans 7.25, with the mind, I serve the law. With the mind is the battleground. The great controversy, the free will. God's, now notice this, in this great controversy, as we approach the final crisis, there's a lot at stake, eternity at stake. But notice this, God's character is on trial. And it must be vindicated by his people. God's character. Romans 3, 4. It says, let every man, let everyone be, let every man be a liar and let God be true. In Revelation 14, it says, God going to have a people with no, no dis- vow or deception in their heart, on their lips. He's going to have a people that will be just and true, that will prove that God is just and true. The honor of God. And Christ is truly involved in the character development of his people. That means God put his confidence in his people, trusting in them to access his power, to reveal to a loveless, degenerate world the power of a loving God, that the world, both unfallen and fallen, will see that the devil is a liar and God is true. And God's going to use people like you and I, flawed people, to restore his mind, his thoughts, as we are thrust into this final crisis. The brain is the battleground. The human brain, notice this, it weighs three pounds, three pounds. It uses 20 to 25 percent of oxygen in the blood. The brain is 80 percent water, 80 percent water. It consists of 10 billion nerve cells. Just take water, 80% water. Just say we don't drink water. We become dehydrated. That creates inflammation in the brain. That disturbs the chemical processes, producing lack of concentration, retention span. Oxygen, not getting enough exercise and breathing. Now, notice this. It consists of 10 billion nerve cells. Listen to this. Each nerve cell, each nerve cell, listen, each nerve cell can record 86 million bits of information each day of our lives. Now, remember, we got 10 billion nerve cells. Each nerve cell can record 86 million bits of information each day of our lives. Now, those who are listening to me, those who are in person, those who are on social media, you compute this. Now, now notice this. Memory can hold 100 trillion bits of information in a lifetime. I'm not a computer wizard, but you cannot find any computer that can match the capabilities of the human brain. Hmm? Notice this. Every second, your brain and my brain forms at least 1,000 different chemicals reaction, and which in turn create thought, 
emotion, and action. Boom. Did you get that? That's why the health message is not an appendix. The health message is an integral part of the plan of salvation. It is, in, it is indispensable in our preparation to enter into this final crisis. Every second, your brain forms at least 1,000 different chemical reactions, which in turn create thoughts, emotions, and actions. This is awesome. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, huh? In a book, I Love You, page 49, it says that if someone were to build a computer to match the capabilities of the human brain, the housing unit would be three times the size of the Empire State Building. They just build a computer to match the human brain. It says it would need all the energy of Niagara Falls to power it while it would take all the waters of Niagara to cool it. It goes on and says it would utilize all the electronic circuitry of all the radio and television stations of the world to make a computer that would do the same thing that your brain and my brain does. In the book called Temperance, page 13, notice what it says. The brain nerves which communicate with the entire system are the only medium through which heaven could communicate to man and affect his inmost life. Most life. I want to repeat that. The brain nerves, 10 billion of them, the brain nerves which communicate with the entire system are the only medium, are the only medium through which heaven can communicate to man and affect his inmost life. Notice, whatever disturbs the circulation of the electrical current in the nervous system lessens the strength of the vital power, and the result is a deadening of the sensibility of the mind. Temperance, page 13. Wow. Notice this. Very important health principle. It says here, the brain is the organ and instrument of the mind and controls the whole body. In order for the other parts of the body, parts of the system to be healthy, the brain must be healthy. In order for the brain to be healthy, the blood must be pure. Eat it and drink it. The blood is kept pure. The brain will be properly nourished. Some of the things missing. But Medical Ministry 291, what that is saying, in order for the brain to be healthy, the blood must be pure. And by proper eating and drinking, the blood is kept pure, the brain will be properly nourished. So the brain is the house for the mind and controls the whole body. For the brain to be healthy, the blood must be pure. So therefore, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11, life of the flesh. Ministry of Healing, page 271. Notice what it says. In order to have good health, we must have good blood. For the blood is the current of life. It repairs, removes waste, and nourishes the body. When supplied with the proper food elements and when cleansed and vitalized by contact with pure air, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. The more perfect the circulation the better will this work be accomplished. Therefore, as we come down to a closure, we already see a battle for this mind. Diet in the frontal lobe, just a few points. In Genesis 9, 3 and 5, God said, eating flesh food, he has given us instruction that flesh food does not produce good blood. Leviticus 3, 17, eat no blood or fat. Proverbs 23, 1 through 3, refined sugar foods interferes with frontal lobe function. Alcohol, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Proverbs 23, 31, 33, it destroys brain cells. Addiction, habits, Proverbs 23, 29, 35, these
poor habits. Smoking. Proverbs 6, 24, 27. It definitely decreased the oxygen. Mobs the body as nutrients, B vitamins. Intemperance, lifestyle, overeating, lack of sleep, lack of exercise. We must be temperate, self-control, moderation. Proverbs 23, 19 and 21. That's what the Bible says. Volume 9 of the Testimony, page 160. Erroneous eating and drinking result in erroneous thinking and acting. Our food affects our thinking. Hmm? It affects our thinking. So when we sit down to choose what type of food, we should not consult appetite. We should say, is this going to glorify God? Is this going to build good blood that will nourish my brain that I will have healthy thoughts? We can destroy the frontal lobe with a knife and a fork. And we can reverse it with a knife and a fork. Huh? Ecclesiastes 10, 17. Thy prince eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. Eat for strength. Diet and eternal destiny. There are but few as yet who are aroused sufficiently to understand how much the habits of diet have to do with their health, their characters, their usefulness in this world, and their eternal destiny. You see, diet is connected with our eternal destiny. I saw that it is the duty of those who have received the light from heaven and have realized the benefit of walking in it to manifest a greater, a greater interest for those who are still suffering for want of knowledge. We become tools in God's hand to enlighten the world. Sabbath keepers. Notice this. Sabbath keepers who are looking for the soon appearing of, our, of their Savior should be the last to manifest a lack of interest in this great work of reform. Men and women must be instructed and ministers and people should feel that the burden of the work rests upon them to agitate the subject and urge it home upon others because our eternal destiny is at stake. Proverbs 4.23, keep the heart with all diligence for out of it all the issues like we must protect this mind for the final crisis because God said in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Remember, glory is character. So my eating definitely impacts my character. Huh? Health is a treasure. Council dies in food, page It is a treasure. God planned to restore this mind. The role of hell in the final crisis, God's plan, hmm, is a decided change. God's plan. A parachute doesn't work when it's closed. It's obvious. A parachute only works when it's open. God is standing at the door of your heart, my heart, and knocking. He will not kick that door open. He invites us to let him in. Will you not take these precious thoughts and let them resonate with your heart and say, Lord, I want you to come into my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life, the Lord and Savior. I want this mind that you have, according to Philippians chapter 2, 15, 2 5. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Because you're coming soon, King Jesus. I want to see you face to face without being consumed. Not only I want to see you, I want other people to be prepared because it says that they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead. That name is character. We will have the mind of God. Oh, my friends, it's always decision time. God said, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart in the day of provocation. My appeal to those of the remnant people, please choose God's will. Choose his plan. 
It has a wonderful plan. You want peace. You want a mind that will be so fixed and strengthened that you'll be able to receive the seal of God, able to give the loud cry, able to go through the time of trouble without anxiety and fear. You'll be like those martyrs of old when they was tied to the stake. They didn't wiggle and panic. They sang songs of Zion while they was burning. God gave them grace. Many of us are going to go through it without even seeing death. Some might have to see death. But this is preparation time. Today is preparation time. Please stay connected to Meet TV as we bring these timely messages of preparing a people to stand true to God in a time of investigative judgment. Preparing the people to be instrument of saving souls. John Wesley said that we have only one business on this earth. That's to save souls. May God give us his grace to cooperate with him. To have the mind of Christ restored in us. I pray that this is your decision. I pray it is. You can always contact us at Meet Ministry. Send in your prayer request. If you find this ministry being a blessing to you, you can also support this ministry with your prayers, with your financial gifts, as we seek to enhance and as we, send, send, as we seek to prepare others, to establish other people in ministry, that God's work will go forward because time is shrinking. We are in Matthew 24, 8, the beginning of sorrow. We're looking for the next season. We want to be prepared. We want you to be prepared. Will you partner with us as we partner with God in finishing this work? If that's the decision, let's pray together. Gracious, eternal Father, Lord, we thank you. You've been gracious to us, to download to us, your divine wisdom. It is my desire that each one of us who have heard your word will allow that word to find a place in deep within the heart, right upon every nerve, every fiber, that we might reflect the very mind of Jesus. Help us, Lord, that we might have that mind to be prepared to go through this final crisis, glorifying you, Vindicating your name, proving to the unfallen world and the fallen world that you are true, just, and fair. God is love. He's gracious. So let that mind that's in Christ Jesus be in this mind. Take these hearts of ours, shape, fashion, and mold them until they become like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his name's sake, amen. Amen. God be